hope so. Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Hazel Jane and I paint crap on my face. In this case, like quite literally. If you've been following me for a while, you will have probably seen that I have been very slowly working my way through the alphabet for makeup inspiration. I literally started it like two years ago. But I really wanted to film the process that I did for this look, which is for R or in this case, Rococo? 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 I was originally looking at Renaissance because I love Renaissance art and all that kind of stuff. The more I looked into it, I started seeing things like Rococo. I believe Rococo was around the 18th century France, like super, super opulent, lots of pastel colors, very bright, insanely over the top and ornate and very, very pretty. I had the idea that I wanted to do this kind of picturesque frame moment. So I decided to try using foam clay to sculpt this i have never used it before i learned a lot from using it but i did actually film the process of how i tried that out for the first time as well so that was fun to be fair this was a really fun makeup to do it's very different to the kind of stuff that i normally do so it was a challenge to say the least it was very much a trust the process until the end and all the bits started kind of coming together so if you would like to see how i created this then let's go so I started off by making the frame piece for this look, and for this I used foam clay and my lovely assistant, Bartholomew. As I said before, I've never used foam clay, and I didn't want it to get stuck on dear old Bart, so I wrapped him up in cling film and used a few safety pins to just secure it in place. After I determined that Bart was suitably protected, and I could start planning out my design. Having the cling film also meant that I could draw my design directly onto it without ruining the mannequin as well. I found loads of different reference pictures and examples of Rococo-style art online, and I took different elements to try and create this gilded frame design, just going back and forth from either side to try and keep the symmetry there as there was lots of swirls and loops and very dynamic shapes within this era, which to be fair actually made it work really well for fitting around the face shape. Next up came the foam clay and when I tell you this stuff is a sensory nightmare. It smells so bad and the texture is so weird, it's somewhere between slime and slightly melted marshmallow and it felt about as sticky as well. I started off by rolling out segments which I then curled and used as the main sort of structural elements for the piece. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing though, so those first few especially were uh, a bit rough. I had a few tools on hand to try and help with texture and smaller details like you would use with like regular clay, but foam clay is a lot spongier so honestly I don't really know if the tools made much of a difference. Moving on to the central forehead piece, I made this weird petal shape bit. Then I tried a few tools to sort of manipulate it into this leaf style shape. Again, the tools weren't super helpful, so I ended up using my fingers, which at least meant that the shapes were fairly uniform. I was able to slightly curl over the edges at the top of it to give it a bit more of a lifted 3D effect as well. And either side of those, I added some little floral details, rolling out really small pieces of clay and then sort of flattening one end to give it like a small petal shape. And this was the result of the finished central piece. I continued working down the sides using a lot of the same processes with creating spirals and curl shapes, then adding floral elements just to try and embellish it. And this was the final result. And for the most part, it turned out how I wanted. Whilst some of the detailing and textures weren't as refined as I was hoping for, I was still happy with the shape. So the next step was to leave it to set overnight. Cut to the next day, nothing had fallen off, so it was time for the big removal. It lifted quite easily from the cling film, but it was still quite a finicky process, but in the end, I managed to lift it off in one piece. And then we move on to the makeup. The first thing I needed to do was check the size and position of the frame. Now, because I'd used a generic mannequin and not a proper face cast, it was never going to be a perfect fit to my face, but the foam clay is very light and you can easily manipulate it to bend slightly around the shape. I realised that the top of the piece sat really close to my hairline, so I opted to put on my wig first rather than risk ruining the makeup and the frame piece by putting it on at the end. Now, obviously this look involved a brow block because why wouldn't it? So we go through the motions of glue it, brush it, powder it, then dust over it with a fluffy brush to remove the excess product. To map out where I needed to paint, I used a white eyeliner pencil to roughly draw around the edges of the frame, which 
Whilst good in theory was not the most accurate of results. But once I eventually got the rough frame shape down, I went in with a soft nude lip liner to start mapping out key details of the look. As I said, I looked at loads of art from that sort of era to get inspiration on colours and composition, and again, I took elements from lots of different pieces to create my own final design. I did change my mind a few times as well, but the liner is super soft, so it's really easy to remove and just redraw it if needed. Now, I wanted to include Thea's sitting on the clouds as well, so I mapped out a sort of general body shape constantly going back to my reference images for position and proportions. Now next up was the fun part. I used a huge mixture of products first, my Meron Clown White face paint, my very well loved unbranded cream paint palette, my Made by Mitchell colour case and a big bunch of P. Louise eyeshadow bases. I used a dense flat brush to start applying the colour and I wanted to try and keep a lot of texture and colour variation to try and mimic the brush strokes and painterly effect that I saw in a lot of Rococo art. I mixed a lot of my colours with white to create a more muted pastel -y shade as Rococo often opted for that lighter colour palette rather than anything super super vibrant. I did also add some darker blue tones around the edges of the sky to, to create a bit of depth. I really wanted to work in layers for this look, so I went in with my RCMA No Colour Setting Powder. I used a really big, dense brush to set all of the colour that I'd laid down, which would allow me to apply shadows and other colours over the top of it without it all blending together. I did my finger test to make sure it was all set, and once they came away clean, it was time to move on to shadows. I used a combination of shades from the Revolution Makeup Game of Thrones palette, my Made by Mitchell Head in the Clouds palette, the Morphe Ashley Strong palette, and the Nomad Cosmetics Ghost Town USA palette. I started to go back in and add some depth and richness back to the sky base, as I did lose a bit of the texture after setting it, so I made sure not to blend the eyeshadow out too much, keeping a really loose grip on the end of the brush to ensure a very light hand when applying it. I also decided to use a cool toned purple shade just to almost mimic blusher on my cheeks and sort of around my lips. Now the next layer was the clouds and again using a flat brush I used the same technique to lay down the colour and try and create very organic shapes and texture. Then going over it with setting powder in order to add a lighter layer over the top of that to create more dimension. I then decided to add some lighter shades over the sky as well just to stop it looking too flat. Now the final part of this section was the figures. Now using my detail brushes from Glisten Cosmetics, I started by laying down the base colours of the skin and any clothing, and I started adding some colour in for their hair, and started mapping out highlights and shapes for the wings. Once I was happy with that, I used the Morphe 18C2 palette on my smallest detail brush to add some shadow and general shading. I did try to add a bit of detailing for the features on the face, but honestly, it, it, didn't, it didn't work very well, and it just kind of all smudged together, so I ended up just extending the hair to kind of cover it up. I opted for a soft pinky blush colour over my lips, focused mainly on the centre and then diffused out with the blue shades to create a powdered ombre effect. And once that was all done, it was time to add the frame. 
So I used the central four headpiece as an anchor, then slowly worked their way around the sides with lash glue to secure the rest of it. Now once I was happy that it wasn't going anywhere, I used very thin layers of white face paint around the rest of my face and down my neck as a base for that sort of super pale powdered skin look that was often associated with Rococo. I used a light grey shadow to add a bit of depth to my collarbones and jawline and then I went in with a pinky shade to add a blushed effect to the rest of the skin. Then lastly it was time to paint the frame. Looking back I should have applied a darker base coat and then brushed the top of it with gold as unfortunately the gold cream paint that I used was not very pigmented and it left quite a patchy finish. I did try to use a deeper brown tone among like the cracks and crevices of the design which helped a little bit but you know you, you live and learn. Once the frame was finished, it was time to sort out the hair and add all of my finishing touches, with the end result being this. Overall, I was really, really happy with the final outcome, and generally, it was just a really fun makeup to do. If you've made it this far, thank you for sticking around. Let me know what you guys think of this look, of this process. What other looks do you want to see? If you want to hit that like and subscribe button, then that's, that's up to you. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Send help, please. Oh.